Hey, what is up guys and welcome to the Sticks You. As per usual, my name is Alex and I'm joined by my esteemed co-host, Tommy underscore esports. And Good today evening. we're actually here with a little bit of a special guest, all the way from LA. What's a little bit weird considering he actually is in London, but he's there for Cod Champs. It's Martin Wyatt. How's it going? Yeah, how you doing? Thanks for having me. No problem. Obviously, you are the head of relations at uh, Chief Finney. That's the official title. So, you know, you, 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 I can see why you're there at Cod Champs. First of all, what's it like being at Total Champs? I mean, obviously, it's a bit different being from London, where obviously G Finney is based, to over in LA for Cod Champs. What's that experience like? It's nice actually to be uh, in the sun. That makes a that makes a massive difference. <laughs> you know what London's like is always drizzle and so rain. But, um, yeah, it is. It's disgusting. Um, but <laughs> to be uh, to be out here for Cod Champs is always brilliant. The atmosphere is great. Um, last year, you know, the excitement starts to build up from around about. Wednesday evening when all the players and all the casters and everybody starts arriving so we're a sort of a few well you know a little bit later today for us at this time um yeah. it will start to get really exciting but already there's a few a uh, few key people bouncing about getting ready so I'm looking forward to it. it should be a lot of fun yeah I mean that's the thing about these tournaments is obviously it takes a lot of preparation beforehand but one thing I really want to talk about is you and how you've kind of at least in my <laughs> personal opinion you've kind of cropped out of nowhere in the last year or so i mean to be honest i'm sure you won't really take much offense of it but you wasn't really that known until all of a sudden you was like this guy working for g so i just want to talk about how you actually got into that position where you was the head of partner relationships and where this like new kindled passion for esports began yeah um you're right it's absolutely fair to say no one knew i was because I'm not anyone. Um, no, but what, what kind of <laughs> happened? <laughs> what kind of happened with uh, with Gfinity was uh, so I had a sort of previous life doing stand up comedy and sort of presenting and event hosting and stuff like that. So when when um, G1 came around, uh, you know, about oh, bloody hell, nearly two years ago now, um, they, they asked me to come along, do some hosting, do some player interviews and stuff like that. So I was like, cool, okay, fine. Wasn't really too, even though like I've always been a gamer, I wasn't really too familiar of, with um, sort of how popular esports was becoming. And then I went out to, prior to that, I went out to MLG Anaheim um, just to kind of get a feel for what it was like when it's done well. Um, and it was amazing. It absolutely blew my mind. And then we did G1, G2, G3. Then we've done the COD Champ stuff twice and the stuff we did for for Riot at EGX and having now opened the arena. It's it's, it's actually... I'm annoyed. And, I, and the reason I'm annoyed <laughs> is, that I did, is that I didn't get involved earlier. But, you know, yeah. on the on the flip side of that coin, I'm having the, I'm having the absolute time of my life. Um, I work harder than I've ever worked in my life. But... You know, I don't consider this to be a job. Um, what we're doing is, is loads of fun. Well, again, it's good It's good that you're enjoying your job because I'm sure there's many, many people out there who aren't enjoying their jobs. And a lot of people probably watching the stream. I think a lot of people probably it. envy him. Yeah, exactly. I mean, oh, yeah, don't get me wrong. Those... I'm lucky. I do consider <laughs> myself lucky. Yeah. 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 I think you do come in at the right time, though, with um, Black Ops 2 because obviously that's kind of when everything kind of exploded. And obviously, um, how did they actually, how did Gfinity actually come about kind of um, approaching you? Was it like something that they saw or like whereabouts did they find you from? Uh, so I, I know um, and had a previous working relationship with uh, Neville Upton, our CEO, and um, Jeanette Jarman, who's our operations director. So they were sort okay. of familiar with um, the bits and bobs that I'd done with sort of the comedy and the presenting and the hosting and stuff. So that, that's how they asked me to get involved. And then uh, once we once we kicked all that off and G1 went as well as it went um, for a first event, it was a case of you know just getting involved in a bit in a bit more of a structured way. You know, actually doing a full time job there to earn my keep, so to speak. Um, and yeah, it's been it's been brilliant. It's been an amazing time. Um, we are sort of at the at the real start of a very exciting period uh, for Gfinity. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously we're doing lots um, for all the various communities around around the UK, Europe, and, and the world. So it's good. No, it's great. It's great. Yeah, and you kind of mentioned it about how you have that stand up background, and that's some of what I really wanted to kind of ask as someone who's kind of been around for a little bit behind the scenes i was wondering how hard was that transition from being in the situation where you know you're doing stand-up comedy to now being in the situation you're in front of a camera talking about a thing a niche basically a niche market talking about esports what you know you pretty much knew nothing about was that a hard transition to make yes yeah, it's, it's, it's um it's, dif it's difficult in the respect that 
you know, I came from, I came from a position of not much knowledge. And so I've had to surround myself and I've been very lucky to be surrounded by some really knowledgeable people that have helped me understand um, the detail loads. So, you know, Brycey is someone who deserves a lot of credit. He's helped me, he's helped me loads, everybody really. Uh, Partizan, all those guys, Warren, everybody. Um, but in terms of actually standing up in front of people and talking confidently and, um, you know, doing that, that's just easy. That's, that's something I'll never be, <laughs> never be frightened of. Once you've, you seem uh, to do it like so of, well. Yeah, I know, but that's the thing. I'm, one, I was born a show off. There was, I've never had, <laughs> I've never had a, <laughs> I've never had a lack of confidence whatsoever. Um, and trust me, once you've stood up, um, front and center stage at the comedy store in, um, in Piccadilly Circus, You've dropped a joke that you consider to be an absolute world beater, and no one laughs. Oh. If, you, if you can, if you, you can, can handle survive, that. Yeah, if you can survive that moment, um, it kind of prepares you for anything. I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased to say that didn't happen that often, but um, yeah, no, it's good. The, the, the stand-up comedy part of my life was amazing fun. It's what it's one of those things, one of those art forms that I would strongly advise everybody to try. Um, the reason is it's completely and utterly liberating. You know, it's it's kind of it will rid you of the shackles of, you know, fear of of, of standing up. Goes. And, yeah, anything goes. It's complete freedom of speech. You know, and there's humour pretty much in most situations. Well, every situation really, as long as you're as long as you're careful and skillful enough to to, to be able to kind of eke it out. Um, but it's one of these things. Yeah, I would just I would advise everybody to try it. Everybody can be funny. Everybody makes their mates laugh from time to time, and it's it is excellent for confidence. It's really really brilliant for confidence. So obviously, um, I think one of the biggest things that we're going to talk about today is obviously the Gfinity Arena with obviously the plans that were announced earlier this year with uh, Gfinity. Mm -hmm. But how exactly did, uh, if you can tell us that, is Gfinity go about saying, right, we need to find a purpose-built arena that is going to be dedicated towards esports? Was it anything to do with maybe, you know, seeing what MLG did and going along the lines of what they were doing? Or did you have this like kind of in the pipeline from the start? Uh, so it was, it was always going to be a vision. It was always part of the vision. Um, I think that what MLG did um, was great. And um, I was with Adam Apichella yesterday, actually, last night, funny enough. Um, we were talking about how things are progressing. It's all all good. And, you know, we take a lot of inspiration from um, from what companies like MLG do. Um, but, yeah, it was kind of always a vision. I, I suppose we, we got there a bit sooner than we expected because, obviously, we've, gr we've grown so quickly. Uh, which has gone really well, um, but the the I think the main driver behind it was when we started reaching out for feedback after G three about what it is that people want and what people want to see and whether the appetite was there for people to attend physically and be six feet away from you know their favourite Call of Duty, FIFA, Starcraft, yeah. Hearthstone, or CS:GO players. You know that appetite was there, so it was about time that we did it. And and you know part of the part of the drive as well comes from the fact they were a tiny bit sick and tired of being behind um, Asia, yeah, North America. You, you wanted parts to be of on level with them, etc. Well, absolutely. And, you know, we have to acknowledge the fact that we're behind and we have to acknowledge the fact that there's work to do and, and yeah, changes absolutely. to be made and, and stuff. But, you know, a stake in the ground has to go down sometime and that's what we've done. Definitely. Um, so obviously, with the the Gfinity Arena, obviously you're not just specialising in just Call of Duty because obviously a lot of people will know Gfinity from Call of Duty who are watching this show. But obviously, you Gfinity as a brand just do, indulge in so many different um, esports. You know, we've got FIFA, CS show, uh, CS:GO, he, uh, he Stones, and so many like different esports and different kind of uh games as well and obviously you've already hosted i think you had the csgo um masters happened this weekend then an event happened uh the week before if i'm not mistaken um how exactly yeah. has that gone in terms of like the production has it gone to uh plan of how you uh thought it would go or have you had any kind of hiccups yeah we had a few hiccups you, you always do when you when you take on a venture as large uh and as exciting as opening uh, an esports arena um so we had a couple of hiccups we 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 basically did a soft launch with a Hearthstone tournament um, two weeks ago on Thursday and Friday, which was great. Really good to get that that game underway and supported from a live event perspective. And then we did um, then we did Count Strike this weekend, and we had a few hiccups on Friday, a couple of technical issues, which meant we had to um, push 
the pause button for an hour or so, but then got back on track and we had an excellent Saturday, a much improved Saturday and, you know, an even, even better Sunday where we ended up with a dream final of NIP and Envy. Um, and it's great. It was really, really successful. We, we are very, very proud of what we're able to offer um, the, the UK community now. And um, we think that we're onto something and, and, you know, we wouldn't be where we are without the support of all the, all the fans and stuff. And you're right, even though, our bread and butter has been Call of Duty and that's how we started and, and we'll, we'll never turn our back on that because we love the game and love the community. Of course we do. Um, you know, it's time to embrace other communities as well because we've been so popular and because we've been so successful through Call of Duty. You know, the FIFA guys are like, okay, well, what about us? Hearthstone or what about us? CSGO <laughs> in the UK are like, what well. about us? Yeah, no, it's great, but that is that is great. And, and yeah. it's our responsibility. You know, if we're going to be the go-to place in the UK for esports, um, which is currently what we are, um, you know, we need to make sure that we're looking after everybody. Oh, yeah, most, most definitely. I mean, with, with you kind of indulging into so many different games, it, it kind of makes Gfinity look like, I guess, kind of the, the, the central hub in the UK for esports. But um, let's now kind of bring it back a bit to Call of Duty, because obviously... Mm-hmm. Uh, there's been a lot announced for Call of Duty, and I was wondering if you could just go for it for anyone that doesn't know. Obviously, you've got an event happening in two week uh, two weekends, if I'm not mistaken, and if you can just kind of run yep. through what other events you've got. Yeah, so well, for Call of Duty specifically, um, this year we'll be running five events. So we'll be running four Masters events, which will be um, elite level. So your pros, your, your optics your MVs, your Phase, your Epsilons, your TCMs, Aware, Infuse, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they are largely invite only, but there will be opportunities to qualify for those. And then we make, we kind of made this big um, statement about wanting to be assisting the grassroots development mm-hmm. of esports through, uh, through Open. So obviously we'll be operating the Open for uh, Call of Duty in a couple of weeks, which... Um, the final day of which will take place out of, you know, we've got a separate venue for the first day because obviously you end up with quite a few teams and then um, the finals day will take place out of the arena. We'll stream it. It will get the same love as in terms of production as all of the pro events do. So it'll be very well done and very well run. Um, and it's going to be good. So, um, you know, we, we obviously, and I know you're going to ask me about it, so I might as well get there before you guys do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's absolutely fine. I got, I got abused. I got abused from pillars. Oh, I can imagine. My- it's Especially cool, though. Ray, she was um, crying a little bit before we had started oh, I, the shot. A, t- a tear fell down my cheek. Give him a tip. When, when, I was <laughs> when we did, yeah, obviously we announced the fact that it's um, it's 18 plus because we always follow the Peggy ratings of the games. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was obviously backlash and there was obviously disappointment and we totally get that. You know, we the reason you know, we were getting a bit of a bit of a pasting as well about taking so long to announce. Um, the reason it was taking so long is we were investigating all of the available options in terms of being able to support um, and involve people that were under the age of 18 to whatever level. So, you know, we were talking to Activision, we were talking to Peggy themselves, we were talking to Yuki, who governed the whole thing, obviously, for us in the UK. Um, But, you know, it just got to the point where we had to make a decision and, and the decision was made to continue um, following the Peggy ratings, and the main the main reason for that is is this. I mean, you know, there are other companies that will ignore the Peggy ratings, and they'll invite. I don't know. They can be whatever. You know, some of the kids can be whatever age they want to be, fourteen, whatever. You know, and I can't speak on their behalf. If that's the way they want to do it, that's the way they want to do it. But you know, when we are desperately working very very hard and investing lots and lots of money in the professionalization of esports in the uk you cannot do that without doing it in total and utter partnership with the publishers and the people that make the games if you do it away from them you'll never get their support and without their support you'll never grow it and and that's what has to be put at the forefront of what we're doing that's what has to be the top priority is actually growing what we're doing so that in the long term it's possible for everybody Mm -hmm. to take part and it's possible for people to have a career and it's possible for people to earn money and it's possible for people to enjoy it um and if that means in the short term that there has to be a tiny little bit of pain you know that's you know we're willing to accept that because ultimately we're about the we're about the the kind of the, the bigger you know the bigger 
story the the growth and the expansion so that it can be professionalized properly you have to do that with with companies like activision if you don't you won't get it anywhere and it will just be hobbyist and that's fine when you when you're 14 15 16 that you can go to somewhere you know and, and play for the weekend and pay a fortune and yeah great you get to go to LAN and and, and i advise people to do that you go, go and do that if that's what you want to do but in terms of actually providing a robust structure proper esports infrastructure proper professionalization you know we have to follow we have to follow peggy you know we did it last year with ghosts and ghosts was 16 mm-hmm. if this was 16 we'd be laughing but it's not it's 18 so um so we have to just crack on with that yeah i i 100 agree where you're coming from from a company standpoint obviously i'm not in your shoes but i can imagine that having that backing from such a big company like activision is such an important thing for growth one thing i really do want to talk about though is how do you really think when you first took on board this job at G3, did you really expect it to be this big where you can talk to Activision, you can talk to Peggy, you can talk to all these big people? Or was it just kind of like a dream and a thought in the back of the head? Or was it really hammered in when you first got the job that this is going to be happening? This is what we want to achieve. Great question. Really good question, actually. Um, it's re- it was really clear to me um, how big esports was when I, when I sat down with um, Paul Kent and he was talking me through the numbers and he was showing me some examples. And then obviously I went off to Anaheim to see the guys at MLG and then come back. And it was just massive. And so it became really, really clear that the potential was there. And what our viewpoint was is that, you know, it can be as big as, as we want to make it. Because, you know, you had EGL were doing good, you know, um, mm-hmm. uh, multiplayer were doing well. You know, there were, there were there were options for people in the UK. What we felt, though, was that there was a there was a there was a different way of doing things, a better way of doing things, and that's not a slight against them, um, hmm. and and that's that was the approach that we took, and we thought, well, actually, how far can we take it? So the vision was always to be, you know, doing it professionally of a high quality, making it exciting, making it brilliant to watch, all that all that good stuff. That was always at the sort of one of the or, or the core of our our ambition, if you like, and you know. By doing a good job, the byproduct of that is you get to speak to the, the, the kind of big boys, if you like. You get to, you get to spend time with the people that make the games. You get to spend time with the people that sign off the big budgets and and want to support you and want to promote you and, and, and get all that done because we do it we're doing it properly. So again, just sort of tying that into that eighteen plus thing, like you know, I'm not going to apologise because I don't need to. Um, yeah. And but I will say that I do understand the frustration and the disappointment of people that aren't eighteen to not be able to take part in our open, and you know I feel the pain definitely one hundred percent. But you know I will say this: trust me when I say <laughs> you'll you know you'll reap the benefits of it. You really really will. Yeah, <laughs> I, definitely I hope that's the, true. Um, sorry, no, I was going to say um, I definitely kind of feel uh, I I definitely feel like. A lot of people that kind of have been giving you the hate and um, kind of saying, oh, this is outrageous, you know, in the past events have been this, that, and the other. I think they're looking at it kind of from a narrow-minded perspective. As you say, like, I think you trying to be on the good side of the developers is obviously going to really kind of um, help Gfinity in the long run because, as you say, they'll give support to events, etc. Um, and obviously... I kind of feel like from the start it's been done wrong with the you know the whole Peggy ratings and stuff. Obviously, if a game is this uh, a certain age range or a certain age group aren't allowed to play, I, I think that all events should stick to that. Obviously, for a long while over, in, especially over in um, America with like MLG, UMG events, etc., they haven't followed the Peggy rating. Um, so it's been a little bit different, and that's probably why people are now kind of taking it out on G Finney. But yeah. I definitely feel like um, I get it. Though. Know, G Finney because... going the right way about it. I, I get I get it though because the the Peggy rating so for Call of Duty the Peggy ratings uh, apply yeah, to the single player countries. aspect of the game they they apply to the campaign campaign sorry campaign mode of the game so it doesn't apply to multiplayer which so it's, it's quite frustrating but you know it is what mm. it is um, yeah so like I say I can't really comment on yeah you know, other companies will do what they want to do so you know <laughs> if uh, you know i series continue to do call of duty if we see anything else event wise from egl you know your am2 pro who had a pretty a pretty decent event um a couple of months ago whenever that was you know if those guys want to continue doing what they're doing that's great but that's up to them and and they'll make the decisions they make but you know we put and this isn't just fluff or 
or rubbish just to kind of get you guys a little bit happier about it. But we, we are putting the long term view first. And, and by doing that, by putting that long term view first, you know, we will respect and protect the, the successful partnership we have with Activision. But that and, a, and the byproduct of that means that once we get this thing right and booming, everybody will benefit. Hopefully, uh, you kind of make me a little bit excited. I'm not going to lie. It's good that you're looking. Yeah, I do that. Though. I do that. I'm quite, I'm quite good at hyping people up. I'm just getting really excited, debate. make Spread some promises debate. I can't keep, and then I'm just going to disappear to Mexico, and nothing will be left. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's fine. I can kind of. I hope that's true. I mean, obviously, it's good to see that you're looking at it from a long-term point of view rather than a short-term standpoint of, you know, try and make as much profit as possible within the space of a year or two and then run away sort of thing. Nice to know yeah, this, that doesn't Mexico. work. There's no, such, there's no such thing as a fast buck. There's no such thing. Unless you invent Facebook, there's no such thing as a fast buck. <laughs> you have, you have, to, yeah, you have to get some run, solid so. deliverables. You have to have a structure. You have to give people something of good quality. If it's good quality, they come back. And then the commercial stuff looks after itself. So, if you're trying to get in and out and just make a you know a quick, a quick few quid off of uh, off of esports, you won't be around very long, and that's not what we want. Okay, um, I believe we're actually going to be taking a quick commercial break. So, guys, you know, go cool. to the toilet, fill up your cup of tea, and all that important stuff, and we'll see you on the other yeah. side of a minute. So, see you soon. Hey guys, hopefully we're alive, you know. Dolly's kind of choked with the producing point of view, so hopefully we are alive. <laughs> Shots um, fired. Just before we get going with this, guys, we kind of launched another Sticks of Power campaign. If you don't know, I'm already wearing some of the Sticks of Power, but you can get your hands on some of your own. I believe we're actually going to be doing two different ones, not just one. We're actually going to have a blue t-shirt and a white hoodie. Both of them look absolutely amazing. So these should actually maybe be on your screen now, so you can kind of have a look at them, see which one takes your fancy. Maybe both of them do. If they do, if they don't, take them, order them, and you can be walking down the street in a hoodie just like this, looking fantastic. So make sure you do check them out. Um, make sure, you know, click add to the cart, and we're all good. Um, <laughs> yeah, moving on from that little sh shameless plug, I'm not going to lie. Um, I need, I, need, I need to afford this tea somehow, so that's how it's going. Um, <laughs> He's poor. You have to understand Rage is poor. Um, yeah, obviously, <laughs> moving on from my uh, my poverty issues, Martin, you spoke <laughs> briefly before the break about how you went to Anaheim as your first event. And yeah. being, I'm going to use this word, being an outsider to the whole community, being someone who, you know, is completely new to this esports, what was it like going to an event overseas for the first time and actually experiencing probably the highest competition of COD out there? Uh, I think it was it was the right way to do it because it got me so excited um, uh, about what I was getting involved in. So, so, you know, that, that, you know, I was sitting there watching impact off the back of, off the back of them becoming world champions and, and their particular rivalry with complexity and, and stuff like that back in those days. And it was brilliant to sit there and watch that sort of kick off and, and get involved in, in that way because one, it made me, it made me excited about what I was getting involved in too. It made me really excited about the potential um, about what we could achieve in the UK. And it was great. It was definitely the right way to do it. Um, I wouldn't have, you know, in hindsight, I wouldn't have done it any other way, I don't think. That's good then. I mean, yeah, it's really nice to see because, you know, obviously as someone who's only been to UK events, the US has kind of always held in such high esteem as being the pinnacle of competitive COD. Um, so, yeah, it's nice to see that obviously you've been there and you kind of took inspiration from the, the height rather than going to one of the UK events where obviously it's not as good. Tommy, I believe you've actually got a question, so why don't you ask it away? Yeah, I was, I was just going to say, um, obviously you went over to Anaheim um, and you this whole kind of uh, journey for you started back with Gfinity, but what kind of point did you realise that this could actually turn into like a career and something that was sustainable? Uh, G1, we did G1. Um, I don't think, I mean, I think G1 attracted... Uh, attracted about two and a half million viewers all in, um, which for our first event we were really pleased with. Um, and it was at that point, and it was like, okay, fine. It, it really resonated with me that, you know, it was the in, the industry and the appetite was were big enough to, you know, to sustain a company and probably help, um, you know, build a company that would then 
be able to kind of give people full-time employment in this really exciting industry. So, yeah, it was probably G1. And then G2 just absolutely hammered it home. Mm. Um, and then, you know, for, we've gone from uh, gone from strength to strength. So, you know, at the point where I got involved, you know, there were four people at Gfinity um, <laughs> before G1. And, and now there are, I can't remember off the top of my head now, but in excess of, in excess of 20. So, you know, we yeah. get, we're getting bigger and bigger and we're growing all the time. We're always looking for the right sorts of people to, to join the team and add some, add some value. So that's no, it's good. It's really exciting. Yeah. It's, it's very kind of um, pleasing to see kind of how Gfinity's grown from that first event at G1 to what we saw in G3 with, you know, four different games going on at once. Uh, yeah. I think it was the copper box arena that you ended up um, hiring out for the event That's right. and getting like, That's I think right. like 4,000 um, spectators just, it's phenomenal growth and it's just good in general for esports. Uh, and then obviously, I think it was last year that you also announced uh, the Gfinity online and kind of all the cups and stuff. What um, I just want to talk about quickly because obviously, apart from, well, before that happened, I think a lot of people were still kind of relying on like GB um, or game battles to kind of um, host a lot of uh, the online tournaments and stuff. So what kind of draw you to or drew you to wanting to kind of indulge into that section of esports? Well, that was always that was always part of the plan. Um, and don't forget that, that you know, Gfinity.net, the website was born out of the WGL, which was always doing a, always doing uh-huh. a, an amazing job of of hosting great tournaments for you know for COD and FIFA and stuff. So that was always, that was always part of the plan. Um, you know, again, Paul Kent's done a and the team have done a great job in in turning that into something that is proving to be increasingly popular day by day, week by week, month by month. Um, and you know the, the the ambition behind that is just to make make it as uh, as accessible as possible for people and as fun and as fair as well. So there'll be some there'll be some changes to uh, the website that come up uh, that come out in a, in the coming weeks that really sort of enhance its features and make it even better. Got to love the WGL. Such I love that place. Um, yeah, before, going down memory day. <laughs> You're getting emotional. There, that's, <laughs> That's where I started my competitive career. Like uh, you had a competitive two, career two, two three wait, years wait, ago. What? You know, wait, two what? three years ago, I was. You played competitive. I, I, yeah, when I was like still. You gotta be careful with that word career. You, you can't be just throwing <laughs> that word career around. Like, I don't think it, your career started, mate. <laughs> I wish. Sorry, I'm uh, <laughs> wow um yeah that's where i kind of started and obviously the wgl is always going to have like a place nostalgically in the back of my head and in my heart so i'm still every time i go on the g3.net i'm kind of like mm, this isn't the wgl but it's nice to see how far it's come one thing i really want to talk about in terms of development is i believe you actually g as a company went on the like the open market so people can buy shares and so on and so forth is that correct yes yes, yeah. yes we're how- a public company yeah how has that really affected the company? Obviously, knowing that you've now got a little bit more financial stability going going into obviously investing in the future with obviously the arena and so forth. You've got the public back in. Is that really more of a safety cushion, and is that really a positive thing for you? Oh, it's have? massively positive. You know, it was all, you know you have to get. It was part of a it's part of a strategy really to kind of make sure that we um, were able to put on the stuff that we wanted to put on. So we were overwhelmed actually by the by the support of people actually purchasing shares and investing in our, in our, in our future. And it's been, it's been great, you know, being a public company gives you much more responsibility as well. So, you know, you become responsible to shareholders, you become accountable to shareholders and, and that's fine. That's a nice, uh, it's a nice pressure to have because it kind of keeps you honest, um, makes, you know, make sure you're focused at all times and, and to do a good job. And it was great to see, you know, we had some of them come along to the, the Gfinity arena at the weekend for CSGO we took them around, showed them around, and we were talking to them so they could see what they're getting for their money, sort of thing. Um, and it was great. It's really good. Really good. It's nice to be supported like that. Um, yeah. Have you actually gone through that stage where you've kind of figured out how much you're worth in shares? Have you ever gone through that where you like, oh, well, <laughs> so a single share is worth this much, so I'd say I'm roughly around this percentage of the company, and try and figure that out. Is that something you've done? Because really I'm pretty certain. Are you, talk, are, you talk, are you talking about me, me personally, or are you, you personally? About the you personally? Have you thought about like, you know, say for example, you you think you're about five percent of the company. You go five percent is roughly around this amount. Have you actually figured that out? Because I I probably would if I was you. Because you know. All right, look, I'm not going to lie. There's a spreadsheet <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, gosh. you've got to keep yourself motivated. No, uh, no. yeah, you, you keep an eye on it. I suppose uh, everyone everyone does when they when they uh, have a bit of skin in the game, so to speak. 
<laughs> and uh, what was that like? Obviously, you mentioned taking the shareholders around the GFINI arena. Did they kind of um, appreciate the amount of work you've put in when you're actually showing it? Because I believe you've actually tweeted some pictures, and I know Goldie's showing them on stream as well. The arena is looking amazing. Is that kind of positive for them? I mean, obviously, it's kind of hard for you to talk from their point of view, but did they come across positive with the growth that you're having at the minute? Yeah, yeah, the, the feedback has been overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly positive um, from everybody, um, so, which is great because you know it shows that you know we're doing the right, doing the right job and doing it in the right way in, in everyone's eyes. So, yeah, I've been really, um, really humbled with the feedback so far, and you know, I will, I will say to people the best, the best way to kind of experience the arena is to come down and and have an event or experience an event so and there are plenty coming up that all the, the schedules on on the website gfinity.net i think it's forward slash events i might be wrong but just go to gfinity.net and it's, it's there in your face um but yeah we, we want to see as many people come um come through the doors as possible throughout the year um it really is brilliant the atmosphere in there is superb um you know because obviously we partnered with view you know certain certain benefits of that when you when you kind of take on some of the spaces that they offer um you're able to generate brilliant atmospheres because acoustically the spaces are amazing so i would advise everybody to get down there and experience it in one way or another definitely quite a good place because obviously as you say like having it in kind of like a cinema built um like environment makes it kind of ideal for esports because that's kind of the general setup how of how kind of gfinity have gone in the past but Obviously, the arena isn't the biggest in the world, shall we say? And obviously, with uh, the past couple of events and the up and coming uh, Call of Duty Open you're hosting, you've what you've done is uh, have it at one location on the Saturday and and then have it at the arena on the Sunday. Do you think this has in any way been kind of um, a bit manic, shall we say? Like, what's it been like for like the production? Because obviously, I assume you're having to transfer from one arena to another in the space of a, over a night. It seems. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, everything worth doing is hard work, but, you know, people coming to the Open don't need to worry about that. There's a lot of effort, but that's down to us. It's down to us to get that sorted. Um, but, you know, we'll just be well prepared and well organised, have an army of uh, <laughs> volunteers helping us out, as we always do. Those guys are the are the unsung heroes and the real stars of yeah. the show. So, um, yeah, it'll be great. Can't wait. It's, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it, actually. Awesome. Sorry just had to sneeze there so i had to quickly like panic leave me my mic before i got it on this on the stream so everyone probably just seemed like just have a, a massive fit on the stream but um yeah so is that i believe the the, the difference between the original venue uh well for the saturday and the sunday is only about five minutes or so i've seen on the website so is that yeah, mean we're right. going to be seeing them running down the streets of london with carts full of production or is it all, <laughs> all set up on the day for it to be like you know one day's be going to be perfect one day's no going it'll be, be done uh it'll be done a little more gracefully it's done a little, a little more gracefully than that. You won't. Night when no one can see. No, well, exactly. Yeah, we'll wait till everyone's gone to bed. No, it won't be like that. It'll be fine. It'll be absolutely fine. You get like those Amazon drones to like carry it over. <laughs> be yeah. um, what's that actually like? Obviously, you work now in a, a London office. I believe it's in Kingston. What's that actually like in a day to day basis to be surrounded by all these people who are so passionate like yourself about esports? Is that kind of a unique experience i mean obviously i don't know what your past experience in employment has been but is it kind of a weird thing to be in that sort of environment where you know it's heavily production based yeah it's really good actually because everybody's uh, everyone's really passionate about what we're doing you know it's a very creative environment you know there are, there are so many ideas that are bouncing around you know with the recent addition of robert olin who's the former ceo of dreamhack you know that that provides a bit of spice in the office because he's a very big character but a very experienced guy and he's he's adding loads into the mix now and then obviously shortly we'll be joined by we'll be joined by red eye paul challoner as well so you know we work with some great people we've got a really solid blend of of kind of esports experience and business experience um that allow us to kind of keep things quite balanced at the same time as being creative pushing the boundaries and and coming up some with with sort of more and more exciting stuff to help the uk get to where it needs to get to um yeah i mean obviously we've kind of said you kind of mentioned you had some experienced people in the past and kind of coming into the the whole gfinity as a company is that kind of thing we've been looking at is you know looking at people i mean obviously you had paula you've got trout and they've all kind of been people who've done their own things and you've kind of decided to bring them onto gfinity is that kind of the way you approach getting new faces and just you know seeing what they can do and seeing how you can bring them in i think it, with any with any company regardless of what business you're in 
if you're growing, if you're a new company and you start to grow quite aggressively, like we have done, um, you need to add really solid people into the into the structure to help you grow as quickly as you as you are. And so, yeah, there's you know, we we kind of look for a blend of a blend of like rich experience or or raw talent. You know, people who just you know you can rely on to work incredibly hard. So you know, there's a blend around the office. You know, we 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 are also very very passionate about finding the next crop of talent um, around the UK. So casters, presenters, editors, producers, graphic designers, um, writers, you know, you, you name it. We're kind of always on the lookout for the, for the next, the next one. So um, yeah, our growth will always kind of have to be um, supported by adding the right people into the mix. And, and so far so good, you know, we've made some great hires recently um, announced some really big, strong um, appointments, and and we'll continue to do so. Okay, that's great. So, yeah, I've got to kind of talk about champs. Obviously, it's the reason as to why you're in LA at the minute. I'm not yeah. going to talk too much about it because I believe you actually have some questions from Twitter. What we're going to be going into after this question, but um, one thing I just want to say is, what's your predictions going into it from the European scene? Obviously, you've kind of got a good experience hosting these events with some of the top European talent. So, what do you think the chances are going over to America for them? You know, to maybe finish toward towards the top of the uh, the placings. Um, honestly speaking, I think it's going to be tough um, for the guys. I think that. With anything, though, you, you know, you, you've always got to be positive and, and there's always a chance, you know, if anything's possible, totally believe that. I just think, I just think we're going to have to be a combination of in, in, incredibly, uh, incredibly focused at the same time as, as actually being quite composed. I think what happened last year was we walked into, into Ghosts uh, Cod Champs with actually a feeling that we could do all right. You know, we had, we had we obviously had some strong teams, as we still do, um, and but for one reason or another, it felt that, you know, we could really achieve. But I think that we kind of got a bit flustered at the wrong times in certain games last year and, and that went, went, went against us. But I think it's going to be tough. But that said, you know, um, total faith in, in any of the European teams to cause a couple of upsets is always going to be good. And I, you know, I think that if any one team is going to do extraordinarily well, it'll be either TCM or Epsilon. TCM have obviously made the big, big move out to... Out yeah. to here for for the for the pro league stuff that MLG are running, um, which I think is disappointing for European uh, Call of Duty, but I think is the right move for TCM if they want to really sort of step themselves up. Um, but yeah, it's going to be it'd be one of those two. I mean, at, at EU regionals, I you know I just had a, I just had a feeling that Epsilon would be able to come after they played so well would would be able to come out here and 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 kind of really cause a couple of shocks and get really far and. I, yeah, there's this eternal debate about the skill gap, but every time we've done a Gfinity event, Call of Duty wise, there's been a European team in the final, so it can't be that big. So we'll see, we'll see. You know, it's it's different. It's home turf for the Americans. We expect them to dominate. Optic Gaming are like a machine at the moment, and they've <laughs> just got a, an incredible lineup. You know, everyone knows that. So um, we'll see. We shall see. I mean, I, I shall be flying the various flags all week and offering mm-hmm. my support where I can. Um, but I hope I hope we give a give a good account of ourselves. You know, the Australians turned up last year and did a bloody yeah. phenomenal yeah. job. They absolutely shot the world, and it was great. And I'm looking forward to seeing those guys again tonight. Funnily enough, um, but yeah, I will be I will be very very pleased. And um, the first one buying the drinks should uh, a European <laughs> team win it. <laughs> oh, good old EU teams. That's it. Yeah, if in doubt, turn to the beer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, mean, yeah, I hope we do. I hope we do really oh. well. I think we've got I think we've got the talent and it's you know it comes it comes down to on the day and I think if we're ready we're prepared we're focused enough and, and we remain nice and composed and stick to a game plan we could we could do well and, and give a good account of ourselves. Right, I believe we're actually going to be going into questions from Twitter. So I think Tommy's actually pulled it up because my computer's being a little bit slow. So Tommy, do you know what the first question is? Please say you yeah. do. I I, have to, I do have the first question, thankfully. Um, first question is coming in from this dude. His name is Geeky um, Shrimp uh, or underscore Shrimp, and he basically Geeky wants to know underscore how... Shrimp. Yes, that's <laughs> his name. <laughs> Where well, already did that? I've got a question already. for him. I don't want to answer. I'm not answering his question. I'm not answering his question until he tells us where Geeky underscore Shrimp <laughs> came from. 
Oh, I'm not. I refuse to answer his question. <laughs> Geeky underscore shrimp should not be left unaddressed. <laughs> what is that about? This question from Twitter has gone reverse. Instead of us, us <laughs> no, I'm not answering it. I'm telling you now. I'm not going to answer it. Geeky underscore shrimp. If you're watching or, I don't know, tweet him or whatever, we need to know where his name came from and we'll come back to his question, but I'm not answering that. Are you being for real? I'm being for real, mate. It's I'm not, I'm not even well. I'm not trolling you or nothing. I'm not messing about. I'm not winding you up. Go I can't to the good question because yeah, but let's Martin do that. We'll come back. To, we'll come back to geeky underscore shrimp. Okay, said, but second. only, and I'm not joking. Only if he tells us where it, where Callum Callum Scanlon, wherever you are, tell us. Tell us where geeky underscore shrimp came from, oh my God. please. It's probably like a really long story about this. You could probably make a whole show on it. Anyway, let's uh, okay, let's move on to the, the second question. As um, you don't want to answer that one. The second question is coming in from at O Daps with uh, or Daps with an Z. I don't know if you want to. Right, this is getting worse, isn't it? It's getting worse with these names. Have another <laughs> pick of his name? No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, <laughs> just in, in just in, to answer. To answer, I'm only messing around with you lot. Uh, it, <laughs> to answer Callum's question about what was it about TCM card TCM it's, going to the question exactly is how do you see the future of EU esports if more teams like TCM move over to America? Uh, I, I think that um, you, you saw with um, with Swanee going over to play play with Optic and obviously TCM making their move this time round. You know, it, it's positive in the fact that the guys just want to compete at the top level. What it does say to us though is that we need to do more in Europe to provide these guys with top level competition of which, you know, there are some plans afoot um, and that will be something that we apply very, very soon. Um, so I think the future for European COD is actually really bright because, you know, there's some stuff that we're putting in place that will allow us to um, compete at the high, at the top level much, much more sort of consistently. There you awesome. go. Get okay. shrimp, dude. Do Answers. you... Alex, you can deal with the second question. I can't. I can't deal with this anymore. I think I'm going to leave the I, room. I, I'm kind of in a shambles at the minute. You know, you kind of went on a little bit of a, a high rate. Um, oh, daps. I believe that's the right question. Or have I got this completely yeah. wrong? Yeah. Okay, I'm ready. Um, oh, daps asks, when will we see a European COD league? <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, There's something to be planned. Intel. Oh. So we. Uh, you can skip if you want. No, no, I'm not going to skip. I'm not going to skip. I'm not the kind of guy to skip. Look, look I just thought like I said in the last question, we the reason that a couple of teams um, decided to experience the North American side of life was to make sure they get to compete at the high level. We're going to make sure that European COD teams, um, without going into too much detail, have the opportunity to do that regularly. It's kind of an answer, but it's a bit okay. crap. <laughs> Interesting. I understand that. Obviously, um, you're not really allowed to say too much, probably at this time. So I can kind yeah, of. Yeah, I'm, try, I'm trying to be subliminal, but you know, I'm jet lagged. I'm bald. <laughs> it's you know, the odds, <laughs> the odds are against me. Okay, I didn't know that was a negative, but um, we'll take it. <laughs> okay, let's um move on to the third question. Uh, coming from Just Stealth, actually our guest who was on last week. Uh, he basically wants to know: Will we ever see you do a stand-up comedy gig at a Gfinity event? Uh, well, it depends. Actually, I mean, people moan about eighteen ratings now. If ever I do a gig, it's definitely going to be eighteen. <laughs> um, I mean, look, oh, I like it. Like I said before. You know, I was born. I was born a show off. I just, yeah, you know, I love the sound of my own voice, which is why I'm talking, you know, this this show actually off the Richter. Um, but yeah, why not? I mean, one, one day I'll do. So I'll, I'll get back into it, and one day I'll do some um, for you guys. If you really, if you really want to see it, if you really want to see it. I mean, to be honest, like worst case scenario, if you want to make people laugh, just get stealth to play some cod from the stage. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure that'd be also as entertaining as your stand-up comedy. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I've heard rumours. Uh, I believe he played in the, the European qualifiers on stream, what you guys are streaming, and it wasn't That's too right, good. Yeah, he did, yeah. Uh, yeah, it wasn't too good. Um, yeah, moving on before I, I get into um, get into the bad books, Mr. Underscore Jono95 asks, are you replacing Jeremy Clarkson? I want to add to that question as well. Are you also replacing Zane from One Direction now that's been? Yes, I am. I'm, I'm, I'm replacing both. Um, both. We're gonna we're gonna oh, combine oh, we're gonna be combining the two. So it will be me, oh, oh. Hammond, um, Captain Slow, plus the other boys from One Direction will all now present 
Top Gear every <laughs> Sunday in shot. front of groups of streaming girls via the medium of song. And that'll be the, that'll be the requirement for a star in a reasonably priced car is not only to drive around the lap um, as quickly as possible, as well. but to sing One Direction hits all the way around. <laughs> Wow. So oh, yes, I, I am the new Jeremy Clarkson, who, which who doesn't mean, by the way, that I, I you know I punch producers or anything like that. I'm I'm a nice guy. I was about to say Trout needs to run if that's the case. Um, who is going to yeah. be the stick then? If you're going to be fusing this together, who is the the, the man behind the mask? Well, who is the Gfinity stick? Yeah, be like Bryce. <laughs> nah, it wouldn't be Bryce. <laughs> He'd be the worst. <laughs> Bryce would be the worst stick. It wouldn't turn up. It, it wouldn't turn up. It wouldn't actually. It wouldn't actually remain a secret, would he? Because one is no way on earth he's getting that helmet over that hair of his. I was just about to say no I way. The helmet on without damage. Uh, I don't know. I get I'll the have to come back to the kind of Oh, I don't know why. It's awful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. It's got a mind of its own. So I look at. I was looking. I was looking at it at the weekend. Like, um, is that what you do in the office? Set... Stare at her. I was just star- I was just staring at his um his haircut and I just thought to myself, well clearly I'm not one to I'm not one to comment because I don't have any hair. Um but I thought to myself, with as much hair as Bryce has got, there's gotta be a better way. There's got to be a better way of doing it. I'm very I mean, disappointed to be, in. To be fair, I've seen it unspiked and that doesn't really look too good. Deep bow. No, it looks like a monk. Really- <laughs> let me, <laughs> it does as well. uh, Deep Bowley, let me just throw this in there before we get onto a topic. Uh, thanks a lot for subscribing for six months in a row now. You are amazing. So, you know, stick swipe, woo, woo. Thanks a lot for subscribing. Um, yeah, um, I, I still can't get over the fact that you called him a monk. It's actually quite true. I believe that's all the questions we've actually got from Twitter. So, the way we usually end the show, the way we also end the sticks is, you know, we leave you. 30 seconds to a minute to kind of close off the show, say your thanks, shout outs, anything that needs to be made. So, you know, Tommy will let you go first, Martin will go second, and then I'll close off the show. So in your own time, off you go. Okay, uh, as always, thank you everyone who has uh, come out of their way to watch the show. Uh, we do try and put on a bit of um, an entertaining show, you know, as, as we always do. Uh, massive shout out to the Esports Hub. Um, you can follow them, on, find them on Twitter with at uh, the Esports Hub. They do kind of... Um, esports reels and stuff for you know the community and stuff they do really awesome content uh and just in general all the links to everything for me and for everyone who does um stuff on the sticks is down below martin cool from my perspective just want to say thanks to everyone for supporting gfinity um it's brilliant that you love what we're doing we just want to do it better and we'll keep getting better and things will just keep getting bigger and more exciting so thank you for your support if you do want to know anything just make sure you go to the website gfinity.net and um what was his what was his name what was his name the shrimp his name what was his name <laughs> geeky oh, under- uh... underscore shrimp <laughs> wherever you are please it's probably not even watching it's probably like please, for, the love, for the love of god please change <laughs> your app please change that actually if um uh, I'll, I've just seen someone in the Twitch chat ask me where I took that photo. That is yeah, in just... Croatia. Yeah, it's in Croatia, oh, funny enough. Yeah, lovely place. Anyway, um, geeky underscore shrimp. If anyone can get him to change his at, I'll send them some Gfinity Imagine merch. if he came to the um, Gfinity <laughs> Open and just was like, Martin, you called me out. I hate you. I changed my app. <laughs> Mate, I'd hug him. This is <laughs> <clearly> <laughs> someone that needs... This what, is clearly someone that, that doesn't need telling off. He needs someone to put an arm around him and say, right... Oh. Now, come on, let's get to the bottom of this. You're better than that, aren't you? You know you're better than that. Geek underscore shrimp is not telling the true story of who you are, my friend. <laughs> so let's change it. He's probably a really cool, really good guy. We all sort yeah. it out. <laughs> We're going to sort that right out. Geek underscore shrimp, Callum. Get in touch. Let's, this let's have a chat. This one particular guy. Like, no one else, just this one particular person. But do you know what? This is, I could help him. I know I could help him. Like The same way I know, for a fact, I know for a fact I could have helped Britney Spears. When Britney Spears went mad and she shaved her hair off and she started to beat her car up with an umbrella, I know for a fact I could have helped her. I just know that some, some of these things are just known. I just know. Callum, I'm here for you, mate. Change that. Change that name. That's all I've got to say. Wow. Thanks very much for having me also. It's been fun. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this um, show's taken a turn for the worse, I think, you know, with, with the bull jokes and... The, it the hasn't, app. actually. If you broadcast this show after nine o'clock at night, then it'll take, take a turn for the worst. <laughs> <trust me. laughs>
<laughs> oh dear. And he's joking. No, honestly, I've had a great time today. Thanks very much for having me. No problem. Again, thanks a lot for turning up mine. It's been a real pleasure. Uh, Tommy, as per usual, everyone shout out to him. He's been great. Make sure you do check out the G3.net website. They're doing some great things for the European scene. And obviously, that's what we're all about at the Six EU. Guys, make sure you uh, you check out the new shirts and sticks apparel like I'm wearing right now. Should be in the chat. Make sure you get your hands on some of them before they go. And down below, there's some links. Make sure you use sticks for 5% off your scuff and 10% off your G Fuel with the code Kingdom. I've been Alex, also known as I Rage, and we'll see you next week with the next sticks. Bye. Bye.